Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viz. Oculus, Facebook, Meta, whatever they're called, recently just announced or released in-app purchases for App Lab games. So uh, in this video, we're going to go through that real quick and show you how to make that cha-ching. But first, I need my cha-ching. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so that YouTube keeps me alive. Now, without any further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here I am in Unity. I'm using 2019 LTS, but you should be able to get this to work on any of the newer ones as well. Uh, I'm gonna skip the usual installation of things because at this point, you should already have a VR project that you want to enable in-app purchases on. So um, just to cover some ground, I have the Oculus integration installed, version 34 at this point, but uh, newer ones should work as well. I also have VRIF installed, and that is my VR platform of choice. So besides that, I have one script here called app entitlement check, and that will of course run the entitlement checks. Um, if you don't know what that is, leave a message in the comments or hit me up in the discord and I'll explain it um, in another video. But basically you need to verify that the application is allowed to run on an Oculus and that's uh, what that's for. So that is required for uh, in-app purchases. So other than that, I've gone ahead and I've set up three canvases that we're gonna just use as uh, an interface. This first one here is gonna list all of the available products in the in-app purchases. Uh, over here on the right, we're gonna list anything that we've purchased and then we're gonna actually just make one purchase here with this button. So that's that. Before we move any further, we need to go onto the developer dashboard and add those in-app purchases to our product. So here I am, I've created a uh, fake application here called IAP test. And basically we need to go into platform services. Well, no, let's wait a second. First thing we need to make sure is requesting permission for in-app purchases. So go to the data use checkup and you're gonna need uh, this third one here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these in real quick. And for the in-app purchases, you get a little drop down here. It says, what are you gonna use it for? Uh, Add-ons of course, and then a little uh, description. and add that to the request. And that is the, uh, I don't know if you need both of these, but I like to have them. Uh, so we'll submit the request. It's gonna ask for your privacy URL. And you certify that you're in compliance and hit submit. It should be approved immediately. If not, then of course you can't move on, but uh, we can see here that in-app purchases are approved. So then the next thing we do is go into this platform services. And right there, you'll see add-ons at the top. So you can go ahead and click on that. And then over here on the right side, you can go to create add-on. So I'm just gonna create a couple of short, quick things here. So I'm just gonna create a cube and I'm gonna give it a unique skew um, that's how you're gonna identify it in the game. So I'm just gonna call this cube-001 and I'm gonna give it a price. Now, unless your application, I may be wrong on this, but unless your application has been approved, um, you can't actually make any money. So for this example, we're just gonna pick some free stuff. And then the next thing we have here is the item type and is it durable or consumable? So. For instance, if it's something that can only be bought once, it will be durable, but if it's something you can buy multiple times, like coins or stuff like that, um, they would be consumable. So I'll leave that as durable for now. You cannot show it in the store because App Lab games cannot be on the store. Um, and then uh, publish immediately, that means it'll be immediately available, or you can of course uncheck that if you want it to be available later. Um, and then we'll hit create. All right, and I'll just go ahead and make one more just so that we have something to show. So I'll call this a mega cube. 
and publish that immediately as well. All right, so now we have two things in our store. Um, and if you come back to this page later and you come, it's gonna be on in progress and you're not gonna see anything and you're gonna freak out. Um, they're over here in this not in store section. So just look there for it. Um, and once someone has it, you can't delete it. You can uh, cancel it, which will stop anyone from getting it from that point on. But if somebody has it and not purchased, um, it's theirs for life. Okay, so now we are done here. Back in Unity, we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a new script here. I'm gonna call it Shop Manager. And let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm gonna remove this update method and this comment. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just type some stuff in and come back and explain it. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and explain what's going on here. Uh, we're gonna be using the Oculus platform and Oculus platform models to uh, handle these things as well as the Unity stuff here. Um, so I've got this class called Shop Manager. I've got two serialized text fields uh, that I'm going to be using to populate the text on the canvas. Uh, so I've got one called Available Items and one called Purchased Items. The next thing I have is a string array called SKUs. Um, and I've initialized that with two of my SKUs that I created there. So you'll need to put in your SKUs um, into your array if you're gonna do the same thing. So I've got a, a SKU for cube 001 and cube 002. So uh, inside the start method, I'm gonna be calling these two other methods. Uh, one of them is gonna get our prices and uh, basically our inventory. Uh, and the other one is going to get a list of all the things we've purchased. Now, um, both of these methods, all three of these actually, require callbacks because it's it's got to reach out and do something and then come back and then react to that. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you the callbacks. I have a private void called get prices callback. It's going to receive a message of type product list and we're going to name that variable message msg. So inside of this method, we're just going to do a little error checking. If the message is an error, then we're gonna bail out of this and you'll probably wanna handle that a different way. But we wanna make sure to not proceed if the message is telling us that there's an error. Um, and then we're just gonna iterate through everything. There's a, uh, a method on that message called get product list, which returns a list of all the different uh, products. So we're gonna iterate through that list and just basically append it to the text of the, um, the text item in the canvas. So we're going to pass it the name of the object and the price in a little string formatted there. So that's pretty simple. And then uh, all the get prices does is actually call the in-app purchase method and then pass it this callback as well. So if we look in there, you'll see we're calling IAP, which is part of the Oculus platform. Um, IAP.getProductsBySKU. We're passing it our array over here of SKUs, and it will get those SKUs and then return back and then call this getPricesCallback method. So when it's done getting the SKUs or the products by a SKU, then it will go ahead and call back this get prices callback and handle this part down here, which is gonna populate our available items text box or text field. So that's that one, that's get prices. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these again. Now we've got two more, we've got get purchases and uh, the callback for that. And they basically work the same way. So we've got our callback, it's gonna receive a message but it's gonna be of type purchase list instead of product list, so that's very important. We're getting back a list of all the things that we bought, not a list of all the products. So we're calling that variable message again. Um, we're checking to see if that message is an error, and if so, we're bailing out of this, just like we did with the last one. And then again, we're calling message.getPurchaseList instead of get uh, 
price list. So this is going to return a list of all the things that we've purchased. We're uh, going to iterate through all those, um, show the SKU of what we purchased and the time that we got it, um, and append that to our purchase items text field. And um, get purchases above it basically just calls that. It goes IAP.getViewerPurchases. Once it comes back with the purchases, it's going to trigger this on complete. And then we're passing it the method that we want to happen when it comes back, which is get purchases callback, which will go ahead and run what's in here. So that's that. So we've got those two methods are being called when we start the program. So we're getting all of our inventory and we're getting all of the things that we've already purchased. So that's that. This next one here is the only one that's public in this group here. So it's a public void by cube. And this is how we're gonna trigger uh, we're going to trigger this by pressing the button on our little canvas. And the same thing as the other two, it's going to call something on IAP and expect a callback. So let's go ahead and just show the callback real quick. Just like the other ones, it's going to receive a message of type purchase this time. Um, and we're going to call that message. We're going to check to see if that's an error. If so, we're going to bail. Um, otherwise, we're just going to clear the text that has all of our purchased items and then call get purchases again so that it'll repopulate all the things that we've pop, bought on that list. Pretty simple. And then um, the method being called is launch checkout flow. So we're passing it the SKU of the thing we're gonna buy. And then again, we're telling it when we complete that purchase, go back to this callback, which will run this stuff down here. Pretty simple, three little methods with three little callbacks and we're good to go. So now let's go back into Unity and let's uh, make sure to assign um, those things. So I've got a game object here that's doing my entitlement. I'll go ahead and also assign the shop manager to that. Um, and then we'll just uh, find the text fields that we are looking for. So this is my purchases text field. So I'll just drag that into this purchased items text area. And then the same over here, the available text field goes into the available items uh, field here. So what that should do is when the program loads, it should um, do our entitlement check to make sure we're authorized to, to use the Oculus services. And then once that's done, it will fetch the uh, current available items and the current purchased items and that should be all we need. Now, um, this will not work on your Unity here. You'll need to actually put this into a headset. And uh, so we'll go ahead and just build this out and load it into a headset. Okay, so uh, I've discovered a couple of mistakes while testing this. So let's go back into the code. And I forgot to put a new line when I appended these strings. So over here in uh, the get prices callback, as you can see, I'm appending, I'm doing this plus equals. So that means whatever text was, it will be plus this new stuff. Um, so we wanna put a new line at the end of that. Otherwise they're kind of all stuck together. And we'll do that with that slash n. So now it'll put whatever's on this line and then hit the carriage return and put something else on the other line. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the purchases callback because we're also appending text here. So we'll just go ahead and just put a slash in there as well, just to make sure that we are not putting everything on one line. The other thing I forgot to do was wire the button to this buy cube method. So the uh, canvas here has a button and I need to tell it to um, execute that method. So I'll just drag down this game object, which has our shop manager script, drag that into the buttons click event. And then I will pick that script shop manager and select the buy cube method. So now when we click this button, it should execute the buy cube method in shop manager. So I'll go ahead and save this and rebuild it 
and we will try again. All right, so here's our app. Let's go ahead and start that up and see what happens. All right, so we are in here, we're good to go. So you can see here on the left side, uh, we have our available items. So we've got the cube, which is free, and the mega cube, which is also free. So it's listing that correctly. And that slash N is what's uh, keeping these from being on the same line, which is a problem I forgot before. Here we have our button that is now properly wired. Uh, we have nothing listed under purchases because we haven't purchased anything. So if we go ahead and click on this buy cube button, uh, there should be a little freeze in this video as it tries to authorize and then we should be good to go and it should show up here under purchases. And there it is, Cube001. I purchased it on November 17th at a very late hour. And if I, since this is just a, um, it's a one-time purchase, if I hit this again, it just shows the exact same time because I've, I've already bought it, so. And there you have it, quick and easy-ish as usual. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons so I know to keep making them. Um, the script that I used in this is available for my Patreon members, so make sure to become one of those if you want the script. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment or join my Discord, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.